A few days ago, OpenAI shocked the world with Sora, a new text-to-video model capable of creating nearly photorealistic-looking AI videos. And just before the announcement, I finished my new AI short film, which now looks like complete garbage compared to that. However, this enormous leap in quality also raises some interesting questions. And one of the most interesting questions for me is, will open source AI filmmaking even have a chance in the future? Or will these tools that rely so much on, on giant supercomputer architecture be only available behind closed doors or via absurdly expensive subscription services? To approach this question and find out just how big the difference to the competition has become, I want to recreate Zora's examples in other AI tools that are available to us right now and compare them. This video also serves as an introduction to all the AI video tools, so if you're new to AI video, this video will give you a pretty good overview. Let's start with Runway ML, one of, if not the most popular AI video generator. They recently held an AI short film competition where you had 48 hours to create a full short film with this tool. And it's really interesting to see what was the standard of AI videos only a few days ago. Now let's find a Sora video that we can recreate in Runway. And I would say, let's just take this first one. So now let's just copy this prompt and go to Runway. And there are two ways for how we can generate video with Runway. We can start with an image or we can start with a text prompt. Let's first start using only the text prompt. And I can see a problem here. So we don't have enough space to fill in the whole prompt. So I need to shorten it a little bit. Now a cool feature is that we can do a free preview. So we can check out what the final video will look like before we have to use any credit to generate. And now the colors here are a little bit blue and this is more like warm and red. But overall, it's interesting to see how close both images are. Now, Runway was also one of the first AI video generators that offered some control over the generated video. For example, we can use the motion brush to select different areas in the image. So we could use that as an input mask to, to tell the video generator how the subject should move, for example, in this shot. And we can also set the camera motion. But I want to try a version where I don't set anything because with Sora, they only used the text as an input. Now I also want to use an image generated by Midjourney as the input image. So I just go into the Discord and I copy over the prompt that OpenAI used and it will generate four images. And we can see these also look pretty good. So now I just switch out this image in Runway with our Midjourney image and generate another version using this one as an input. Next on the list is Stable Video Diffusion. And this is the first research preview model by Stability AI, the creators of Stable Diffusion. This one is free to use for research purposes. And I'm using it in ComfyUI because it's my favorite interface for Stable Diffusion. Now Stable Video Diffusion is this part here and it's an image to video model. So we first need to generate an image. And because with Stable Diffusion there are hundreds of different models and ways you can generate images, so instead I want to plug in the mid-journey image that we generated so we can better compare the models. So let me quickly load the image, just plug that into the setup, and even though it looks like we have a lot of settings here, we can actually not change a lot. We can use the motion bucket ID to change the strength of the animation or the motion in the video, but we cannot tell it what kind of motion it should be. So when you work with stable video diffusion, the only option is to put the seed to random, so it will change it every time you generate, and just re generate lots and lots of videos and look for the best. So interestingly enough, this is pretty comparable to Sora. With Sora, you also only put in the prompt and all the artistic choices, for example, the camera movement, will also be decided by the AI. So for example, in this prompt, we don't have anything that describes the camera movement, but still the camera floats around in space. And in this prompt, we actually have a description of the camera movement, but we don't really see this rotation in the video at all. Another AI video tool that already offers some directability is Animate Diff. Animate Diff allows us to animate any stable diffusion model. It also has some amazing video to video capabilities. For example, I used it in my last video to transform videos into other styles. I highly recommend that you check out that video as well. But OpenAI Sora also has some amazing video to video capabilities. Just look at this example. So I wanted to recreate something like that with Animate Diff and it works okay. But now let's get back to the normal text to video workflow. So this is my setup and it, I know it looks complicated, but I'll put a download link to it in the video description if you want to try it out yourself. Basically, I'm just doing the same thing. So I'm going to copy this prompt and put it here in my positive prompt. And so because prompts work very different in Stable Diffusion, I took the freedom to also add this negative prompt. 
Now, when I ge generate a video with this, you can see that it's very static. It's not moving at all. But in Animate Diff, we can actually control the motion a little bit. So I also want to do another test with a motion LoRa. And here is an example for that. So I just loaded my Animate Diff LoRa and I'm going to use this zoom out at a strength of one, put it in here and cue the prompt again, generating another video. So the last two workflows are amazing because they are completely free to use on your own machine. Problem is that they are not too beginner friendly. So now let's get back to some web-based tools. Pika Labs works in a very similar way to Runway. You can also either generate from text or use an input image. And let's do both things. Down here, I'm going to put the prompt. We can also set the aspect ratio. We have some control over the camera movement, but I'm leaving these settings as they are and just click generate. And for the next version, I'm using that mid-journey image that we generated as a base. Finally, I want to show Leonardo's AI video model. And it's also an image to video model, so we first need a base image. We can either generate that with Leonardo itself or use the mid-journey image. And I'm going to show you both things. So let's go to image generation and generate a new image. I'm going to copy over the prompt here and then I want to put in some settings here on the side. So first I'm going to use the Photoreal version 2. This uses the Leonardo Kino XL model. We're going to use that. I think that's the upscaler. And then for resolution, I'm going to take this one. Mm, let's actually make it 16 by nine, of course. And we have to turn off image guidance because we don't want image to image. We want to generate a completely new image. So let's see what it will create. And we have this image here. This looks actually pretty cool, so let's let's just use it. So I'm going back to the front page and go to this motion page here. Now I can select from recent images, go to your generations and there's our image. Let's click confirm. Motion strength, I'll just leave that, five, and let's click generate. I also want to upload an image. So here I'm uploading our mid-journey image. I leave the motion strength at five and click generate. So these are all the tools that I want to show you today. I repeated this whole process for some other Sora examples and I also curated the results a little bit. So it's not always the first thing that I generated. So yeah, let's compare the results.
Alright, so what have we seen here? Of course we've seen that Sora is much better than any other AI video generator. We have amazing consistency, realistic movements and even a pretty solid understanding of physics. But I was honestly pretty surprised because some of the shots by the other tools weren't too bad. And that got me thinking. Is Sora's advantage mainly computational power? Is the architecture of the other tools fundamentally worse or could they achieve similar results if they just gave their models more data and a lot more processing power? I feel like Sora's research paper kind of implies that. Look here. This is Sora at different levels of computation. The first level looks similar to where AI videos were like a year ago and the middle one looks like where most tools are right now. But even if the other tools are able to catch up by just scaling up their operation, it's questionable whether they can put it into a product that people actually can afford. Because that computational power is expensive. And running something like this locally seems pretty impossible, at least for the near future. So I'm interested, what do you think? Will accessible or even open source AI video still have a future? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you very much to my lovely Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. If you want to support the channel, gain access to our Discord community and additional workflows and tutorials, check it out under the link in the video description.